So we did a little hunting video, and this one, the greatest value book was found in the least expected place. Welcome to the Paper Chase channel. Thanks for stopping in again, doing a little hunting video. I know we don't do too many of those recently, but I definitely want to start to do more. I think this was a cry for help. There is a collection that I was really hoping to kind of get my hands on, and it was kind of, it awoke the beast inside. You know the beast that's inside all of us? The one that just wants to flip through an unknown box of books and hopefully stumble upon something so great and rare for the personal collection or for you to flip or whatever it is you want to do with it. That beast was waking up inside. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go out of town, hour and a half away to Biloxi that actually has a few comic shops and a couple of pawn shops and thrift stores. I was like, I'm going to go old-fashioned hunting. I haven't done it in a while. After all, this is the Paper Chase channel. Let's go chase some books. Before I roll the footage, I do have some great news. The Paper Chase channel has been airing the Into the Void podcast, which has been a lot of fun recently. We try to do every Thursday nights at 7.35. It's me and my buddy, Reverend Wormwood Comics. You can find him on Instagram. This upcoming Thursday, we're actually doing a podcast that touches on the topic of sex in comics. Where's the line drawn for picturing women on comics in scantily clad outfits? Scantily clad? Mm, never used that word before. Never used that term before. We're going to have a special guest come onto the show. So I think it's a great discussion that uh, is going to be super interesting and educational. So don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way you know when the Paper Chase drops content, like videos like this or the podcast. Now, let's go hunting. Okay, great news. We got to the flea market and it's closed. Saturdays and Sundays only, apparently. Uh, so that's a bummer. But we did pull up at the pawn shop in Biloxi here, this little joint. We're going to pop in. This guy's typically got around 30 to 40 short boxes full of comics here. And then sometimes we'll get some new stuff and kind of keep it behind the counter. And I'll like try to finagle them and be like, hey man, come on, let me uh, let me check those out. Apparently if you go to a pawn shop and they have items, they need to be security checked before they release them. So the cops need to run a report on them, make sure that the items are not reported stolen. So that is something I found out last time. But we are here, we are gonna pop in. Let's see what we find, digging for gold. Digging for gold, let's go. Okay, so it turns out that the comic stores don't open till after three. This is new. This is completely new. So like maybe 50% of the places that I was gonna go today uh, aren't even open. This is crazy. There's a couple of thrift stores around here that sell very, very little comics. Uh, maybe we can run into something and see what happens. So yeah, on to the next place. Let's go to the thrift store.
All right, there you saw the footage. The first pawn shop that I went to, the guy Sam in there, this guy's a huge comic book collector, which is why he has so many books in his shop. And every time I go there, him and I end up chatting for like 20, 25 minutes or so. Uh, and he's really knowledgeable about comics and really cool. When I was there, he was actually cleaning the cover of a Batman 181 first appearance of Poison Ivy. And this thing looked like it was gorgeous. If you're taking full covers off of comics and cleaning them, you got some experience and you got some balls. The best book I picked up was after I left there and on a whim I went to this other thrift store. And that's where I found the biggest book of the day, we'll call it. But let's go through with what I picked up at his shop. So he had a lot of the weird war books. These are DC Bronze Age books that still have a lot of um, things that are kind of... Uh, favorable tropes in the comic world. Skulls, women in bondage, um, Nazi symbols, the swastika. These things are, for whatever reason, very collectible. Now, uh, the bondage thing, meh, I guess maybe it depends. It's not something I really look for or I'm seeking after. But the swastika thing is very interesting. It's definitely a piece of history that's on the comics that... As uh, society progressively gets more and more politically correct... You know, um, I just think that these things are kind of a commodity and they aren't going to be around for too much longer and they're going to be kind of hard to get a hold of. So if I do see these books occasionally, I will pick them up. And this one here specifically is Weird War Tales number 90. And you can see there uh, really cool. I'm also a very big horror fan, but you can see kind of like the uh, Nazi vampire. Pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, it says on the back. Hitler appearance. I don't know if that's him in the coffin or not. Didn't read this one yet. Uh, but really, what really attracted me to this book was the condition on it. This thing is probably like a 9.4, maybe a 9.8 if I can really clean and press the hell out of it. I can tell you this with comics. If you have any bronze, silver, golden age comic with World War II propaganda that can press out to be a 9.8 in grade, it's definitely a book that's going to hold some value. So this for me hit on the horror level. It hit on the value level, potential value level. Uh, and I just thought it was really unique. So this was one. We picked up, I don't always get these anniversary editions, but this one was, again, in super high grade. I'm talking this is a possible 9.8 candidate, definitely a 9.6. Uh, but this is the Daredevil. This is the anniversary edition, as you know a lot of these covers are. When it comes to rarity in this type of anniversary edition comic, one of the rarest ones is, actually I'll show you, is this one right here. This is a Care Bears, what's the volume on this? Seven? Care Bears number seven, anniversary edition, newsstand. This thing is extremely high grade, and I implore you to look up the value. Actually, I'll post it right here. Uh, what that in a newsstand sells for in a 9.8 is bonkers. When I was a kid, um, you know, Care Bears came on TV. I didn't watch it at all. Maybe I did. Another one to look out for too, which I think is even more rare than the Care Bears one, is the Ewoks one. Uh, and the reason why is because these were children's books. So if you can find them in high grade, that means this book survived this long without some crummy little kid getting his hands all over the thing. The next two books he actually gave me for free. And again, huge horror fan. I saw this book and this definitely reminded me of The Haunted Mansion. This is DC Ghost Comics issue number 63. And really cool image of the bride before the wedding. And you just see the reflection in the mirror of just that creepy skeleton. Really, really cool image. Love the artwork on this. These are great. Um, typically, I will only typically I will only pick these up if they're in really high grade, like a 9.0 or higher, unless the artwork just surpasses that, and I don't care, and I just I just really want it. And considering I think it was only like two dollars, and I ended up getting it for free, this is a no brainer. So definitely uh, was happy to pick this one up. And then the other one that I got for free, excellent cover. This is definitely Halloween esque. Uh, I have now a copy of it, but this is definitely fueling me to try to find a 9.8 copy of it. And a 9.8 copy of this book is very expensive. This is House of Mystery. I think it's uh, Elvira issue 11. Yeah. Issue number 11, Elvira. Very witch-like on the broom. Kind of looks like a similar logo. This is an amazing cover. Right now, I'm currently got my eye on one that's on eBay. 
I might go balls to the wall on it for the bidding. I don't know. It's a newsstand too. So if I can get a 9.8 of that in a newsstand, that might be a wall book. So this time around, Sam had almost an entire, uh, okay, we're not going to say an entire run. But this guy maybe had about 70% of Captain America run in his back issues. Um, this whole spec thing, I don't really do too much anymore. Uh, one of them was this one right here. This is Captain America issue 180. This is the issue where Captain America takes on the role of Nomad. Now, one of the reasons why I got these uh, couple of Nomad books you're going to see is because there are some... Uh, spoiler alert, if you don't like to hear. But there's some possible leaks of them doing a Captain America movie of him returning the Infinity Stones. And I've always thought, since I saw Avengers Endgame, I was like, they, I was like that's a movie. It's like that little blink of an eye time where he's returning the Infinity Stones is a whole movie. And it sounds like they might be doing it. And they might uh, be going with the Nomad character. So for those of you that don't know, the Nomad character is basically uh, a short time where Captain America found out that uh, the U.S. government and stuff was kind of doing some dirty stuff. And he gave up the Captain America moniker and was like, screw you. I'm still going to be a hero, but not for you guys. And he developed the character of Nomad, which would kind of make sense because once he's kind of in between, um, once he's traveling the multiverse, he's not really designated to just America. So he is definitely a Nomad in that sense. So, so I picked that book up for $18. And the reason why is because that's a book that I'm just not going to come across very often. You don't really come across a whole lot of Bronze Age Captain America stuff uh, in at least in my LCS. Now, the next one that I picked up in relation to the Nomad spec, if you want to call it, this is the first full appearance of Jack Monroe, who takes on the role of Nomad uh, in the future. And this one I just really liked because, one, I did like the cover. Also, it's extremely high grade, uh, other than the tanning, which I can fix that. I've really been working on detanning books and, um, you know, the page whitening thing. So I'm pretty sure I can get this copy into the nines. And nine eights of that book are pretty, pretty expensive. Not to say it's going to get a nine eight. That's going to be pretty hard. But even if it got like a nine four, um, that'd be a pretty cool accomplishment. And then this is just a great Captain America cover. This is issue number 230 of him battling the Hulk on the cover there. Awesome cover, extremely high grade, and uh, yeah, just going to get slapped. If that can get like a 9.4, 9.6, or a 9.8. Will these be for sale? Some of them, maybe. I don't know. It depends. A lot, of it for me, a lot of it for me really depends on what happens when the book gets back to me. Once I take it out the CGC case and I look at it in its slab, and then I look at the value, you know, right then and there, I decide like, is it worth it to me for this book to leave my possession for X amount of dollars? I don't know. We'll see. So make sure you are following me in the description links below, eBay, Instagram, Shortbox, whatnot, um, because if I do sell these books, that's where I sell them at. Okay, are we ready for the biggest value find of the day? So I leave the pawn shop. I'm like, meh, it was okay. It was, you know, I've definitely had way better. Let me see what else is around. So I start calling a couple of thrift stores that are on the way home, and I call one. And they say that they do have some comics and they have some racks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the footage of me actually stumbling upon this book and where it was. And then we'll talk about it. Check it out. And there it was. So this was Spectre issue number 54, the first appearance of Mr. Terrific. Not only this right now is one of the bigger spec plays for DC Comics, but more importantly for me is look at this cover. The artwork on that, the zombies, this is really cool. The Spectre is a really, really cool um, horror-esque character from DC Comics. I have a lot of his older Silver and Bronze Age stuff. And, uh, you know, his covers always uh, display some sort of kind of horror-like theme. So I typically tend to keep them. 
This is not a 9.8. I would say I'd be lucky for a 9.6. It's probably going to be like a 9.4. The front is pretty flawless, but the back has about three or four spine ticks. But this thing in a 9.8 is extremely hard to get. And this also, this is a book too that is just scarce in general. You know, there's not a whole, I don't know what the print run is. Comment below if you know what the print run, run is on this book. But there's not a whole lot of these out there. I want to say last time I checked on eBay, there was maybe only seven or eight of these for sale, period, on all of eBay, which is an extremely low number. The first appearance of Mr. Terrific, Spectre number 54, $2.60. It's like pretty much, that's the cover price. So pretty wild. $110 total spent for all these books with the potential to uh, hold a lot more value than that if the right cleaning and pressing uh, methods are done in some of these things. So, and I can't wait to do that because that's always fun. Comment below too if you have any topics that you guys think might be interesting to cover on a podcast. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for checking out the video. Like and subscribe if we deserve it. Hunting videos are always fun. We'll see you on the next one.